week from Hollywood, we're taking you to the Deadfall premiere and on a wild ride with gangster squads Sean Penn and Ryan Gosling. Then we catch up with Taylor Swift, Katy Perry, and other stars as they check out the People's Choice Awards. And it's a double awards show feature as we attend the Golden Globe Awards. Next, we'll head over to Kanye and Kim's new Bel Air mansion. Then we shine the spotlight on the charming Ryan Gosling. All of these updates and more coming up. But first, let's take a look at the red carpet. Deadfall premiered in Hollywood and we caught up with the famous faces behind the feature. It's a good sign when you feel a little bad. Are you okay? I hope you can forgive me. Olivia looked stunning as she posed and took in a little of the limelight. Director Stefan Ruzowitzki made the rounds as well. Kate Mara and Eric Bana were excited for the feature film and posed with the cast as they made their way into the theater. Joining them was Charlie Hunnam. It's a good sign when you feel a little bad. It won't ever happen again. I swear to God. You're talking to God, so you might as well swear to me. The cast of Warner Brothers Gangster Squad arrived at the premiere at Grauman's Chinese Theater in Hollywood. Ryan Gosling, Emma Stone, Sean Penn, Josh Brolin, Giovanni Ribisi, Michael Pena, Muriel Enos, Robert T. 1000 Patrick, and Russell Brand were crowd favorites and stopped to say thanks to their fans on the way in. Ryan Gosling and a usually private Sean Penn signed autographs for screaming fans as they paraded into the theater. Russell was seen with a new leading lady and Emma looked smashing as always. This gangster squad knows how to work up a crowd. You're gonna be begging for a bullet before it's over. Speaking of Russell, his ex-wife, Katy Perry, attended the People's Choice Awards at the Nokia Theater in Hollywood. She arrived solo. The Wanted made an entrance as well. And Rumor Willis looked fit and slim in a bareback dress as she waved to fans before joining the rest of the Hollywood elite. Heidi Klum wore a black off-the-shoulder dress with her hair tied back as she waved to fans and walked in to find her seat. Wearing exactly the opposite in white, a newly single Taylor Swift hugged a friend as she walked in. Upswept hair must be a thing of the season because Jennifer Lawrence also walked into the award ceremony with her hair pulled back. Breaking the mold, Paris Hilton let her locks flow to rock a green dress only she could pull off. I'm very pleased, very honored to receive this award. <laughs> well, that's something historic. <laughs> Gee, it feels good. The stars showed up in style for the 70th annual Golden Globe Awards in Hollywood. Looking sleek and spelt on the red carpet were celebrities Bradley Cooper, Jodie Foster, honored with the Cecil B. DeMille Award for her career, and Naomi Watts, Tate Donovan, Victor Garber, Judd Apatow, and Lucy Liu were also there. Steven Spielberg, whose Lincoln was honored with Daniel Day-Lewis, winner Jessica Chastain, Robert Pattinson, Mel Gibson, Jeff Daniels, Megan Fox, and Brian Austin Green also joined us for the festivities. What's a party without an after party? We caught up with Ron Livingston, Minnie Driver, Amber Vietta, Rachel Zoe, Frida Pinto, and Dev Patel at the W Magazine post-award show extravaganza. I'm reminded of when uh, Joan Crawford actually uh, won her Golden Globe and she said, uh, I can't do it, I can't. <laughs> she said, I'll show you a pair of Golden Globes. <laughs> Reese Witherspoon has a doppelganger. Her daughter Ava is a spitting image of the Legally Blonde movie star. They look so alike, even we had a hard time telling them apart. Reese's son Deacon was also along for the ride. 
We checked in on your favorite celebrities as they attended the LA Clippers and LA Lakers games. James Belushi, Patrick Schwarzenegger, and Taylor Lautner with a new girl. Bye guys. We also spotted Billy Crystal, Kris Jenner, Maria Shriver, and Magic Johnson. Now that Kim and Kanye have announced their pregnancy to the world, it's only fitting the expectant parents should locate a new nesting place. The happy couple has reportedly purchased a new home in the Bel Air neighborhood of Los Angeles. We have your first look at their sprawling new mansion. We recently spotted Kim and her pal Jonathan Chibin in Miami. While there is no word on whether or not the new Kardashian baby will have a name that starts with K, we have an inkling her fans will support the new bundle of joy either way. Lindsay Lohan headed out to dinner with her new BFF, her plumped up lips. She is currently staying at the Mandarin Hotel in London. While her and her lips dine in the UK, her lawyers are defending her in the US. Lindsay was a no-show at her criminal court hearing in New York City. Let's see if her and her lips can get out of this one. With rumors circulating that Joe Simpson is gay, 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 we bring you this clip. You know, so that you can decide for yourself. Joe was joined by Eric Johnson and some friends during a leisurely cycle ride. Grandpa Joe times three, be happy, man. What's your racket, handsome? I'm a Bible salesman. You wanna take me away from all this and make an honest woman out of me? No, ma'am. I was just hoping to take you to bed. This week, we shine the spotlight on Ryan Gosling. The Canadian-born actor starred opposite George Clooney in Ides of March and appeared in All Good Things, Blue Valentine, and Drive. Ryan currently stars in Gangster Squad alongside Sean Penn, Josh Brolin, and former co-star Emma Stone. We asked him about his new role in the genre he has loved since he was a little kid. My first gangster movie was Dick Tracy which I was a really big fan of. I, I was I collected all the Burger King cups and had the posters and I thought I might get a cup out of this deal. It has not happened. Could we get a Tim's mug for Gangster Squad, please? Ryan told us that he had long looked up to Josh before they had even met. When I was a, a kid, I, one of the first plays I ever saw was Josh in, in True, True West on, on Broadway. So I, uh, I've always, been a fan of his, so it was a uh, you know it was like great for me to get to finally work with him. But he's like really funny and to the point where it's a problem. It's <laughs> yeah. distracting. What about working with Sean Penn? We wondered how that went over. I can't. I didn't work with him, you know. So I kind of like. But I, I thought we were going to get to be in the film together. But when I read the script, like I realized that uh, we didn't actually have any scenes together. I saw more of Sean Penn in the trailer for this film than I did on set. Ryan was more lucky with Emma Stone. We had to be serious in this movie, which was very hard for us. And uh, you know, once you've like been a knucklehead in front of somebody, then you know, you uh, it's kind of hard to start to then pretend like you're Humphrey Bogart or something. Then Ryan told us about the costumes and props. They didn't give us any of the wardrobe. I thought I was gonna get to shoot a Tommy gun. Instead, I got a lady gun. Talked to Josh Brolin about that. And then I thought I was going to get to keep the suits, too, and that was no dice. Yeah, let's get mugs and, and the wardrobe. Then he told us about playing a real-life character. Uh, it is a lot of responsibility, and it's, it's specifically tricky in a situation like this when, uh, you know, the events are being, you know, kind of like the creative license is being taken with the, with the truth, you know. But Ruben and the producers worked very closely with the families, and I think that everybody was like... Uh, uh, you know, was happy with the direction that the movie went and that it was going in a more theatrical version. And so I think that they were all right with that. Ryan told us that the reason he decided to get into acting was because of Elvis. Seriously. Well, Elvis and his uncle, you can put two and two together. Well, my uncle was an Elvis impersonator. And he, um, I mean, I didn't, it took me a while to realize that that's what he was. I just thought he was uh, different than everyone else. But he came to live with us for a while, and he was like, started making this jumpsuit, and he was like putting sequins on it and like bedazzling it, and it was like, I was just little, and, and I, I was kind of like, it was the most interesting thing happening in the house, you know? 
And then he was like singing in the mirror and he was doing the voice and he's working on the songs. And I just, I guess I watched him create a character over the course of a few months. Meanwhile, he had like a birthmark, a mustache and no hair. He looked nothing like Elvis, but he became Elvis. And I think, I mean, that must have had something to do with it. You can't shoot me. You're a cop. Not anymore. Die! Pirates of the Caribbean may get a little speed action if the film's new writers have their way. A confirmed deal has taken place between Pirates and the writers of Speed 2 and Rush Hour 3. But I did better, didn't I? The new Pirates installment already has a heavy hitter attached to its cast. Johnny Depp will reprise his role as Captain Jack Sparrow. The rest of the cast has yet to be announced. More than 34,000 people signed an online petition to encourage the Obama administration to construct an 850 quadrillion Star Wars inspired Death Star. Their petition was surprisingly denied. A White House spokesman said that the Death Star, which could blow up a planet with a single beam, might not be in the country's best interest as the administration does not support blowing up planets. Steven Spielberg has signed on to produce Jurassic Park 4 in 3D. The beloved classic film has been given a release date of June 13, 2014. Welcome to Jurassic Park. This may be the reason behind Spielberg's pulling out of Robopocalypse. The cast for Jurassic Park 4 has not yet been revealed. Hollywood box office countdown feels like it should have debuted a little closer to Halloween. We have action flicks, a musical, a true life-ish war event, and a haunted house. At number five on our Hollywood box office countdown, overthrowing last week's parental guidance, Golden Globe winner Les Miserables with 10 million. They caught my wife. They sold it, but I don't know who to. Moving from spot number two to spot number four, best screenplay Golden Globe winner Django Unchained. This Tarantino film took in 11 million. What's your name? Django. The D is silent. Going up against 40? Well, you gotta die something. Our number three film this week is a new one on our countdown. Gangster Squad brought in 16 million. Yeah, I kicked you in your ghost balls. I got some for you. In the number two spot on our countdown for the first time, A Haunted House. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon you. Did you just quote Sam Jackson? The R-rated comedy took in 18.8 .8 million. <laughs> Any questions? In the number one spot this week on our Hollywood box office countdown, Zero Dark Thirty. This 9-11 pseudo-documentary brought in 24 million. <laughs> Hollywood birthdays this week have our celebrities turning anywhere from 31 to 68. Rock star David Bowie turned 66. Leaving Las Vegas actor Nicolas Cage turned 49. Liam Hemsworth turned 23. The Hurt Locker's Jeremy Renner turned 42. Prince William's Duchess of Cambridge Kate Middleton turned 31. Maggie May crooner Rod Stewart turned 68. And R&B sensation Mary J. Blige turned 42. Be sure to tune in next week for more glitz, glamour, and news from the Hollywood Newsfeed. Yeah.